Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to talk about the four different kinds of influenza. That's type A, type B, type C, and type D. So we're going to start with type A. This is the one that you hear about the most. This is the one that um, causes the seasonal epidemics that we associate with influenza. So type A is classified into subtypes. You've heard of them, I'm sure, H1N1, H3N2. What do these letters mean? Well, they're actually based on something called hemagglutinin. There we go. Hemagglutinin, or HA, and something else called neuraminidase. So hemagglutinin, HA, neuraminidase, NA, what are these? These are surface proteins. And so when we're talking about H1N1 or H3N2, um, these are both currently circulating strains. We're talking about strains that have slightly different hemagglutinin. So this one has the H1, this one has the H3, or slightly different neuraminidases, that's the N1 or the N2. And there's many different types. So, so not just one, two, and three, but you've got many different types of hemagglutinin, many different types of neuraminidase, and they can combine in different ways. And so this is how we classify these based on their surface proteins. Now, what do these surface proteins do, you might be wondering? Hemagglutinin binds to sialic acid, which is something that's on the surface of like target cells, so that it can enter those cells when it binds to the sialic acid, when the hemagglutinin on the flu virion binds to the sialic acid on the target cell that stimulates endocytosis. The target cell brings the flu virus in and then it can begin its replication cycle in there. Um, Neuraminidase is another surface protein that happens at the end of that replication cycle when the offspring viruses are budding off of the cell, they have to cleave that sialic acid residue, so cut it, and the neuraminidase does that. So these are important surface proteins that allow the flu to get into a cell and then get out of a cell to go and back the other one. <coughs> Excuse me. So back to type A. Type A is the only type that is known to have caused pandemics. I'm gonna put this one in all caps, pandemics. So we know that epidemics are when you have a lot of people getting sick in a short period of time in a distinct location. A pandemic is when an epidemic has taken on global worldwide proportions, so impacting a, a huge amount of the world. And so type A is the one that is known to cause those major flu pandemics. Um, it's also got the fastest mutation rate of all the types. I should say that all of the different types of flu mutate, all viruses mutate, uh, but this one is the fastest one, which is in part why it can cause these pandemics. It also, another reason it can cause these pandemics is because it has a broader host range. So what does this mean? This means there are more species that a type A influenza can infect. And I've listed just some of them here. Ducks, chickens, pigs. These are the ones we maybe hear about the most when we think of like avian flu or swine flu jumping into humans, um, but also horses, dogs, cats, whales, seals, gulls, swans, and, and more. So lots of different species can be infected by type A. And I also want to mention that with um, all of these different um, flu viruses, you see something called recombination. This is because they have a segmented genome. All that means is that their genome is in different pieces. And so if you have two different flu viruses, let's say one from you know, ducks and one from pigs, and they jump into a human at the same time, and if those two flu viruses um, jump into the same human cell at the same time, you can get offspring viruses that contain genetic material from those two different flu strains. Um, this is called genetic um, recombination. Um, it's also referred to as antigenic shift, which is a little bit different from kind of your normal standard mutation. And that is what allows uh, 
type A to cause pandemics and to be so deadly. Now there are two different types that we're talking today, talking about today that are used in vaccines. Type A is one of them. Now let's talk about type B. Type B still certainly has the hemagglutinin and the neuraminidase, but it's classified differently. Um, type B has diverged from type A just through the process of evolution. So it's a, a different but related strain of a virus and it's classified based on a place of origin. So the different flu B lineages are named on ge for geographic areas. So like Yamagata or Victoria, these are ones that are circulating in the population now. Um, and, and so they're named after the place where they were first detected or where they originated. And so this one does have a more limited host range. Fun fact, type B flu can still infect some other, you know, other species. For example, it's been detected in seals, um, but it doesn't have this. It doesn't have this big, broad host range, um, particularly with animals that are often in contact with humans um, for agricultural practices, like the ducks and the chickens and the pigs. And so it doesn't have the very broad host range. It's much more limited. And this is probably why there are no known pandemics. So that's not to say that it couldn't cause a pandemic, but it hasn't historically since we've been able to keep these records. However, it can still cause death. Um, and it does tend to be a little bit more dangerous for young people. So sometimes when you have um, young people get very sick or die from the flu, um, it tends to more often be this type B strain. And the type B strain, we know that um, it, you know, even though it doesn't cause pandemics, it can still cause epidemics. It still tends to be seasonal. So that's something with type A and type B, they tend to, uh, there are lots of cases in the, in the fall and winter and fewer cases in the spring and summer. So they have that seasonal kind of um, pattern. And this is the other one that is also included in our vaccine. So when you get the flu shot, you've typically got um, you know, two or, or three of, of some of these. So we've got a couple of type A and a couple of type B, um, or maybe just two type A and one strain of type B, depending on you know, what year it is and what's in that vaccine. But um, there's, there's generally gonna be an A, a strains and a B strain uh, represented. Now we'll move on to the third type of flu, that's type C. This one um, still causes respiratory issues. Um, but it's much milder, much milder symptoms. Certainly it still mutates, um, but it's not one that we vaccinate against. So it's not present in these vaccines over here. Um, it, it tends to be, you know, mild symptoms and it's just really not a public health concern. Um, it's also not seasonal. I'll go ahead and write that on here as well. Not seasonal. What I mean by that is that people can get this one kind of all year round. Um, it doesn't have a huge peak in the winter the way type A and type B do. Um, and, and so this one is just really not that much of a public health concern. People get type C flu and they think they have a cold, it looks like a cold and it doesn't typically cause many problems beyond that. And then type D, this one was discovered more recently, I think within maybe about 10 years ago. Um, and it's not known to infect humans at all. It is, however, found in cattle. And so with type D, you might think, well, we don't gotta worry about that one. And that's true, maybe right now, but certainly um, we know that flu um, type A is really, really good at it, can jump from, from species to species to species. And certainly there are other viruses that have started out in cattle um, that eventually did jump into humans and establish a pattern of infecting humans. And so that's always possible as something to be worried about in the future. So those are our um, type A, type B, type C, and type D flu. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out some of my other videos like introduction to viruses. That's something that you might also be interested in. Or um, I have another video on um, disease of pathogens jumping from one species to another. And so that might be another one that you would like to check out. And thanks for watching Biology Professor today.